Hi, so here's the scene that we're going to create using Houdini. Uh, we also, um, I also used in this project Substance Painter, a bit of Marvelous Designer, Speed Tree, and um, and it was rendered in Redshift. Okay, so basically, um, this is a piece of land uh, just to illustrate in a TV show in Brazil that the natives. Um, long, long time ago, like two, three thousand years ago, they used to build this island in a very uh, flat and wet area in Pantanal. And they lived on top of these uh, small islands built of shells and bones. And um, so they could like spend more time hunting in the area. And at the end, they, they lived for some of these areas, some of these islands they used to live um, they kept for like a thousand years uh, living on that. So pretty remarkable. So let's dive in and I will discuss a few techniques that I used in this project. I hope you enjoy. Uh, we're going to use like a height field node and the way you're going to do is like this uh, EGF height field. We're going to dive inside. Um, I'm going to call this section cut. And when we dive inside, uh, the default is a thousand by a thousand. So in Houdini, uh, the units uh, are generally like a, a meter. So it's a thousand meters by a thousand meters, one kilometer by one kilometer. And what we're going to have is like 20 by 20. But what happened, and we don't see because the, the way that Houdini works with height fields, they are not um, a polygon now. It's not a polygon base. Like if, if you go inside here and if you keep diving, it's not a polygon. Uh, you have like this grid spacing, but in general it works more like a volume, but it's um, it's uh, it's more like a volume and in the end we convert back to polygon. So uh, this grid spacing of two means like two meter every grid spacing. So in this moment we will have only like one, two, three, four, uh, around like 10 grid spacing. So it's more or less like one unit, one grid, so it's really big and there is no subdivision between each of these. So to keep the same uh, proportion, let's put it back to 0 0.05. So we have the same uh, resolution as we had in the default. Okay, so let's create like an HF noise. And now uh, what's also a uh, mask, oh sorry, I used the wrong node. So let's put like a noise, uh, yeah, here, here it is. Uh, what happened by default, like it's going to be, maybe it's going to disappear. It's just because it's centered by no noise, but the amplitude and the element size are too large. So let's put back to five and five, just to see where we are. Um, now it looks like a massive terrain because all these like look like a mountain chain or, or it can look like a small piece of land, but then too tiny. It's not like definitely doesn't um, make us feel like it's 20 meters by 20 meters. So the element size, we're going to use uh, a big one because it's not because you're cutting just a part of your land that your element size is not big. So uh, I put like this and increase a bit. I'm kind of liking it because we're getting like this uh, part here that looks good. So we have like this island and some water in here. I think that looks like a good a starting point for us. Um, yeah, what I'm going to do, I'm going to offset a bit this noise and we have like a, this offset. And so if I come here and offset a bit, I'm going to gain a bit more area on this top here. Yeah, like this. So we have more area. And maybe we can offset more to the left as well. So then we can reference here like this X axis. So yeah, let me, um, yeah, something like that. And then um, maybe we can use like a distort node. I'm not going to use the erosion node. Uh, it's not going to be necessary because uh, we won't see what's happening on top because we're going to be covered of vegetation and everything that's happened here in the side section that we're going to create is not going to be affected by this road node. So what I'm going to do is going to use like a distort node, uh, distort by noise. And what this noise does, it just um, creates a noise and distorts the, this, this general look. So for example, now the element size is really big. It's going to distort the whole thing. Like a, it's a big, massive uh, changing in the whole uh, scene. Uh, it's not what we want. We want like a, a, a tiny element, like a, a smaller, but also with smaller amplitudes, just to give a bit more, um, to make it a bit more interesting, like in the sense of like having more uh, bumps and, and 
yeah, small formation like amplitude of one, maybe like a smaller size. Yeah, you see like uh, when the size is too small, yeah, it's just too much. Yeah, I like this. I think it's it's interesting enough. And then the next part we're going to do is like, uh, we're going to do a volume extraction. So uh, let's do it. Uh, a volume, ex extrude volume, sorry, it's not extraction, it's extrude volume. And, and what it, what this node does is already, uh, we don't even need to convert it to, to because in a normal workflow with height fields, you just uh, come here and you create like a um, HF convert. Um, yeah, and from here you'd go here and come to polygon, yeah, so, and then you have like a polygon mesh from this uh, terrain, okay, so that would be the result, um, and then if I would uh, plug this in here, uh, you see, I would have like this uh, extrusion based on this, uh, on this uh, conversion, Okay, so it's, it's good and it worked well and that's the way you're going to do. But if you use like without this, you'd get like a more like a, a like less resolution, you know, like in a bigger mesh triangulation. Uh, still worked well, but because we, we could subdivide here, but then uh, if we subdivide in here, what happens is going to create like this soft edge. We will need to create a crease here. So there is just a bit more work uh, to be done. Like uh, if you come and see what's happening here, it's a bit tricky, like um, the way it handled the subdivision with the side and we lost this nice sharp edge. That's interesting for this kind of illustration. So uh, I will take away the subdivision. I will come back to this uh, convert high field, put that in here, and then I'm going to extrude everything from this, like back to here. And what this node key give us is something very interesting. We have like, um, uh, so, and uh, just for you to know like this, uh, the depth is one meter from the lowest part of the terrain. So I guess we have around a meter in here or somewhere. Yeah, maybe in this lowest part we have a meter. Uh, but for us, it's really good. Like uh, we have a good proportion between like the, this, this uh, dimension and the dimension of our land cut. I like it. So, uh, but that's a, an artistic choice and you can play with a lot of things. Uh, I'm doing this in like, for example, a real scale thing, like uh, these are 20 by meter by 20 meters. And a man here would have like a, we'll have like around one, one meter 80, something like that. So it's a real scale for everything for the cut. But imagine that like you're, you could just be cutting a continent or, or anything that you want, or just like a piece of brick. Uh, it works in any scale. You just need to figure out like what are your needs for this. And then uh, this is a group creation. It's uh, just a way to autom automate uh, the, this, uh, to separate from the side, the top and the bottom. Uh, we don't care much about the bottom, but we're going to have it just in case it's because it's free. So top group, base group and side group. And these are the names of these groups. Uh, so if I middle click here, I'm going to have like these primitive groups, all of them uh, just set aside. And we're going to use this to create our UDEMs. Um, UDEMs for, you who doesn't know um, what it is, uh, UDEMs are, are, are different like tiles of UVs. So uh, you use it to, ga to gain more resolution. I'm going to, yeah, maybe it's better to show you when uh, now. Uh, let me just save, okay? Uh, and then let's use like a UV flatten. Uh, the UV flatten uh, ask for one thing here that's important is the seams, okay? So we don't have any seams yet, so we're going to press this button here and it's going to take us already to the selection with the edge selection and we're going to double click in this edge so we can get like the whole loop and then another double click here pressing shift so we can keep both and and then I go to the other corner it's easier because I can do this one and this one and this one I should have done the other side the same thing but it's fine no problem Okay, so I take this one, double click, this one, double click, and I think there's only this one, yeah. So now we press enter, so it's going to give this selection to the seams as where it's going to cut, so it's going to tile it of the seams, so I have all these vertices. The, the number are really high because it's considering this and this and this and this and not the whole thing. So now we have like uh, everything cut. And if I press space five, I'm going to give me all the tiles and they're going all be piled on top of each other. 
So next step would be to use like a, a UV layout. Uh, let me come here. Okay, it's just going to automate and it's going to do it uh, the best calculation to have like everything uh, spaced um, the best way possible for this um, for this style. And that's what I mean by, by UDEMS. This is like one by one and you can have a resolution here like for example 1K and, and 2K and 4K and 8K and, and whatever you want. But um, doesn't matter like a, with this way it's settled. Even if I use like an 8K map, uh, and it's very heavy in the system, i still going to have like the, just this kind of resolution. Uh, depending on what you want, maybe it's fine for you, but because I'm going to be really close and I want a really good resolution on, the, on this, I need to separate these in individual tiles. Um, what I could do, I could move this to the side and then put it vertically and, and just place it here. Or I can even ask uh, the system to, to Houdini to do it uh, for me. And to do that, I'm going to create like three different layout nodes and I'm going to separate them by group. So this first group is the extrude uh, sides. Uh, so I'm going to just think about the extrusion of the sides. I'm going to keep them. Uh, no, let, yeah, let me do the, the, the base first. And for the base, uh, I'm going to bring it instead of rectangles, I'm going to put UDIM tiles. And the default for this one would be the number three. So if you have a look, it's placed in here, so it's the bottom will be here. Uh, we won't care much about this one, uh, I won't see it. Uh, maybe I could even like delete, but I, I will keep it, I don't know. Maybe I can have an idea later to use the bottom and, and come the camera from the back, I don't know. So, uh, so I'm going to create a new UV layout. And this one, let me put this uh, base uh, or bottom. I call this top, and in this one, still thinking a bit, just a moment. So in this one, uh, I will call the group uh, top, and I will do the same thing. I will come to my advanced tab, 4K, and in here, UDEM tiles, the four UDEM two, so I have it here. I will come to the another one, I press um, tab, UV layout, I'm going to get this, and this is going to be the size, and the size we're going to place in the first one. Okay, so it's just use everything back here, but uh, we just want this side to be affected, and now that we have this, uh, I'm going to do rotations like five degrees so it can gain more space and it's optimizing the maximum it can with this uh, I will keep this this will be the default UDIM uh, 1001 so we have 1001 I will call this uh, site and now we have everything uh, separated in the in its own tiles in its own UDIMs and yeah I think uh, that's now for for this lesson and see you in the next lesson